Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we explore the mysterious world of Little Misfortune, taking a look at the game's various story elements, characters, and of course the ending itself. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into another episode of Horror Games Explained as we join Miss Fortune on her quest to find eternal happiness. Rather than simply guiding you through the story moment to moment, the best way to explain the events of Little Misfortune is to break down the main themes of its narrative. These are all built around two key characters, a little girl named Miss Fortune and a mysterious narrator referred to as Mr. Voice. When first loading into the game, this voice addresses the player, breaking the fourth wall and communicating directly with us. Welcome to my game. I'll be your host and humble narrator. The rules of this game are simple. Play it until the end and you'll be rewarded. After doing so, the narrator then introduces Miss Fortune herself. This is Miss Fortune. She's a wonderful child from a not so wonderful family. A little sparkle for you, and a little sparkle for you, and a little bit for me. <laughs> oh, the sad part is, today is the day she will die. As stated by the voice, misfortune will perish over the course of the coming day, and along the way we uncover her tragic backstory. She comes from a broken home life, with both her parents acting abusively towards her in different ways. Her father being physically abusive, and her mother a drunk who neglects to properly care for her. Throughout the story we see many examples of the neglect misfortune has to suffer. One example can be seen when examining this blood-stained rock called Stony, an object her father threw at her in a fit of rage. As twisted as it is, this symbol of parental abuse is now Misfortune's best friend. Because of her miserable home life, the voice easily manages to manipulate Misfortune with a promise of eternal happiness. If you can reach the end of the game, I'll give you eternal happiness. Deal? Eternal happiness? I guess I could give that to my mommy. Okay, it's a deal. He leads her out of the house and away from her mother in pursuit of obtaining the love her heart so desires. But Misfortune seeks something, or rather, someone else. A fox who has been hanging around her house recently, who she has named Benjamin and seems very fond of. Remember Benjamin the fox? This is where I first saw him. He was hiding in the trash and we made eye contact. It was really intense. Yes, you've told me about that fox already. You shouldn't trust a fox. They're all criminals. What? A fox criminal? <laughs> That's silly. For some reason, the voice is very wary of this fox and seems to actively despise any mention of him. Miss Fortune is an impressionable, gullible young child who often acts without thinking, and at times this irrational behaviour leads to grave consequences. The voice tries to inform her of this by making it very clear how her actions always carry a cause and effect. Check out this following sequence in which we see two very different outcomes when Miss Fortune interacts with this dog. Now focus, Miss Fortune. You have to make a very difficult choice regarding this puppy now. Be aware of the consequences. All right. I will play with it so we can share a nice time together. Good choice. Now throw the ball at it. broken now. Mr. Voice, everything I touch breaks. What's wrong with me? I'll set it free so we can go to the party. This must be his dog. So are we going? 
Yes, why not? It's just a bit farther ahead. Come on, puppy. Let's go party. When something tragic occurs, such as the death of this dog, Miss Fortune has the ability to rectify it, at least in her own mind. To do this, she sprinkles an unsettling event with her bottle of glitter, and this magically transforms something sad into something magical. Doing so helps repair and ease her broken heart. It is also worth noting that the world as seen through the eyes of Miss Fortune is a very different place. Adults wear masks to mask their true feelings, appearing happy on the surface while being miserable beneath. Again, this is very telling of the child's overly optimistic and naive view of the world, always trying to see the good and happiness in the darkest reaches of humanity, so that she never need confront her own grim reality. This particular scene perfectly illustrates how Miss Fortune handles a tragic situation in a very abnormal and troubling way. Oh no, wait. It looks like he hung himself. Hung himself? Like a piñata? Should I hit him like a piñata? No, Miss Fortune. He's dead. George, you know, now that you're dead, your puppy is gone. I like the puppy. Bye. <laughs> the further we journey into the game, the more often we encounter the fox known as Benjamin. He is often found leaving cryptic drawings behind labelled with a sentence, hide your children, and beware. Sometimes he is found forming strange symbols in the earth, and he even leaves behind dolls with notes attached to them. These notes piece together a hidden narrative, and we'll return to this secret story later in the video. Every time Miss Fortune catches up to Benjamin, he runs away, and once again the voice warns her this fox is dangerous and not to be trusted. I recognise that black tail. It's Benjamin. It doesn't matter. Attack it before it kills you. Nah, I don't think Benjamin will kill me. <laughs> The plot thickens when Miss Fortune begins to notice posters advertising missing children pasted around the Openfield city streets. Could these missing children be somehow linked to Benjamin's drawings? The voice assures Miss Fortune that these children will all be found eventually, seemingly trying to downplay and evade discussion on the subject. Look, even more missing children posters. So many. I wonder what they're missing. Oh, don't you worry about them. I'm sure they will all turn up one day. You think so? Of course. I don't know, Mr. Voice. This is starting to smell mysterious. Things become stranger still as Miss Fortune begins to see the ghosts of some of these children, including a Japanese student at her school called Hiro, who wears an alien mask. It is almost as if these ghosts are trying to warn her of something, stuck in a limbo and unable to find peace. Eventually, Miss Fortune reaches a pet cemetery, where in the grave of a goldfish, a box containing her eternal happiness is unearthed. But upon opening up this box, only a handwritten note is found within. The note appears to be written by Benjamin, and states that he has stolen the eternal happiness. Could it be that Benjamin really is stealing these children's happiness, and therefore causing them to go missing? The voice insists that Miss Fortune travel to the zoo to speak with Benjamin's cousin, the wolf. Once there, Miss Fortune has no luck speaking with this creature after following the voice's instructions and entering its cage. What she does find, however, is another note, this time with an address to Benjamin's house. The journey to Benjamin's house isn't a simple one. Miss Fortune is required to pay a skeletal boatman to ferry her over to an island in the middle of a lake. Once there, things don't feel very safe at all. Strewn across the forest floor are all manner of toys belonging to the many missing children. 
Before long, Misfortune is chased by a terrifying monster, and strangely, the voice urges her not to run from its predatory advances. Oh, 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 Misfortune, slow down. What are you running away from? Is it the fox? I'm pretty sure it was the fox. No, it's the monster. I saw it again. Luckily for Misfortune, she soon meets Benjamin the Fox, and he helps her up and leads the child to a nearby cabin, where he currently resides. Inside the cabin, Misfortune discovers the Fox's diary, and upon reading it, is informed of exactly why he was watching over her. Benjamin is not of this world, in fact, he has travelled from a separate realm of existence altogether. You see, Little Misfortune shares the same universe as another game called Fran Bow, which we have previously covered right here on the channel. In this shared universe, there are five different realms dubbed as Free, which stands for the five realms of essential existence. These are as follows. Primeve, the realm of light and goodness. This is the realm Benjamin originates from. Ephirsta, the realm of time and reality of life. Pandora, the human realm Earth and the planets around it. This is Misfortune's realm. Senecidi, the realm of death, where fallen souls may find peace. This is the realm Benjamin works for. Apollo, the fifth realm also known as the Beyond. It is a place of darkness and pure evil, home of the demon Morgo, the monster who chased Misfortune in the woods outside the cabin. Benjamin acts as a guardian of light, watching over the children who have been led astray after death and guiding them towards Senecidi, the fourth reality where they may find peace in the afterlife. However, he isn't allowed to interfere with a child's journey directly, only influence the direction they are headed, hence why we found those dolls with the story fragments attached. His latest assignment is to help Misfortune evade a powerful demon known as Morgo, who wishes to tempt her into the fifth realm, the beyond. It is revealed through Benjamin's diary that Morgo is the voice in Misfortune's head and has been leading her towards the darkness. It is now up to Benjamin to vanquish this demon and help guide Misfortune toward the light. Before making this discovery, we are given many hints towards this revelation. Those stone totems, for example, do explain things in simple terms, using phrases such as, the game of death feeds the shadows of the beyond. Misfortune and the player partaking in this game of death as led by the shadows of the beyond, Mr. Voice. The illumination of Primeve will dissolve the filth of the beyond. This referring to Benjamin being the light from Primeve, able to stand up to the demon Morgo. So to wrap up this segment of the video, Benjamin is an agent of the afterlife working for the side of good, a guardian angel for the souls of children, if you will. While Mr. Voice is a demon known as Morgo, who works for the side of darkness and tempts children to their doom in his reality, the beyond. We are given many hints that despite appearing to care for Misfortune and look out for her, the voice in her head acts cruelly toward her. For example, remember how the voice led her into the wolf enclosure and then acted surprised when she wasn't attacked. Wolfie? Ah, oh, damn it. What scared him away? Why can't a little lady respect the wolf? Oh, that was unexpected. Not to me. Animals usually run away from me. That's too bad. Or how about the time she fell off a ride at the park and hurt herself, only to be laughed at? Oh no, misfortune. And the time the voice agreed with a hurtful remark kids at school had made towards her. The mean children at school say that I have a pumpkin head. I can see the resemblance. The what? Nothing. Huh, okay. On and on it goes. No wonder the demon showed such disdain for Benjamin and did everything it could to steer misfortune clear of his helping poor. After leaving the cabin, Misfortune is confronted by the voice once more, and despite her resistance, is given instructions to return home. You need to find your eternal happiness. I'll give you a clue. It's at home. 
waiting for you. I'm sick of that eternal happiness. I don't want it anymore. You can't say that. That would break the rules. You heard me. I don't want the eternal happiness anymore. I won't tolerate this behavior. I'll be waiting for you at home. Against her better judgment, she complies with this request and takes the train back to town. During her journey, she speaks with the ghost of Hero once more, but this time witnesses firsthand the power of Morgo, as the demon materializes and drags the poor boy into the beyond. Eventually, Miss Fortune makes it back home, however things are not as she left them. Everything is coated in a hazy mist and red glow. The inside of a house is dilapidated and rotten, no sign of either parent to be found. Unsuccessful in winning the original game of death, Morgo attempts to initiate a new one, returning both home and misfortune to the beginning of the story. But misfortune is wiser and stronger now. She quickly figures out the demon's ruse and refuses to play his game. But in doing so, she is confronted by Morgo's true form. I'm done with you. I want you to leave. Right now. You don't have a clue about what's going on. This is not the last game you play with me, Miss Fortune. This is only the beginning. Just when all seems lost, Benjamin, the Guardian of Light, shows up to save the day. He vanquishes Morgo with his staff and sends him back to the beyond. After the battle between good and evil has been won, Misfortune awakens in her room once more. Everything seems to be back to normal. Searching for her mother, Misfortune heads to the front yard, where she finds her speaking to a policeman. For some reason, Misfortune is unable to get her mother's attention, and soon she finds out why. Heading to the road, Misfortune is greeted with a horrific sight, her body laying dead on the tarmac after she was hit by a car just hours earlier. The journey she has been on was one to the afterlife, the forces of good and evil vying for her soul. This is why she took the boat's journey. The ferryman paid a gold coin to take her across the river to the realm of the dead, just as is written in Greek mythology. But with Benjamin's guidance, she avoided the darkness that lay in wait on the other side. Benjamin shows back up to guide Misfortune's soul to its final resting place, so she bids her mother goodbye and leaves with him. I guess I was your little misfortune for a while, but you need to find your own happiness now. I love you forever. In Senecidi, we see many familiar faces, creatures from the story of Fran Bo and Misfortune alike. One of these is Itward, the skeleton who himself helped guide troubled children toward the light. Benjamin leads Misfortune to a giant doorway, where she will make her final journey and pass on to the afterlife. Before we enter, a tree of crystals takes the energy from Misfortune's heart and begins to light up. This is where we are presented by two different endings, one neutral and one happy. If the player has discovered all glitter points throughout the game and sprinkled them with sparkles, then after Misfortune heads through the doorway, one final sequence will play out. We return to Earth where Misfortune's mother grieves behind her mask. Life just got worse and she finally realised just how much her daughter meant to her. Not all is lost, however. Misfortune collected enough light and kindness in her heart and is therefore able to send a message from beyond the grave. Looking down on her mother from the light above, Misfortune bestows the gift of eternal happiness. The mother removes her mask and smiles, finding inner peace. Misfortune may have died, but her quest was not in vain, and will now act as a catalyst for her mother to be a better person and lead a more fulfilling life in memory of her daughter's passing. As for Misfortune, she has found peace in a different realm. Perhaps she will even make friends with a girl named Fran. And that's it for today's video. I hope you found it both entertaining and informative. 
If you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.